I had a friend in college, freshman right yeah. year. They were uh, two friends who would yell at each other, and the yelling would always get higher and higher and higher. And so the habit that we developed in making fun of them, we would all do that. And so now it's just a thing I do, which makes me the weirdo because now I'm the one that gets high when I get excited. <laughs> so, open your notebooks, work, the formula sheets, laptops, or whatever you take notes, make notes, okay? Get ready. Today we have a very important lesson, and you need to uh, learn that. Okay, I'm going to uh, yell at Yasser. Yes, sir. Like I'm practicing to yell at students for late, <laughs> but I'm skipping it, okay? <laughs> this time. <laughs> So, eyeballs on me, real quick. This is one of those lectures where you're going to be, where if these two questions show up on the test, you'll be like, we're going to try how to do this. We're specifically showing you how to do this right now. It is tough. That's why we're doing the lecture in class. It is not fun. It's a lecture proof. But it means that you should be engaged and be asked the questions. Make sure that if you're stuck on something, pause, stop saying, ask the question, ask back as a rephrase, whatever needs to happen. So this is a hard, hard lecture. He's done it once, so you're getting the benefit of that. I have done it many times, and it's still hard. Okay. So make sure that you're engaged and pay attention. Don't be doing that thing that some of you do where you're playing Wordle or other things. Man, I said nothing to be excited. <laughs> so, I hope everybody is ready. Wait, Becca, you forgot to yell at Olivier. Yeah, Olivier. <laughs> yeah? Everson, why are you late? Six minutes. Six minutes. Whoa, you're faster. It's like a practicing yelling at people. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Everson's like, whatever. <laughs> okay, so, so far, we have learned by heart rotational inertia of some of the symmetrical objects. For example, we know the rotational inertia of a sphere, cylinder, disk, rod, and mass at the radius r. For example, the sphere. So the moment of inertia of the sphere is equal to what? Two fifths m r squared, right? This is a sphere. So, for example, a rod. The i is equal to. For the rod, what is the rotational inertia? One, one third MR, ML squared, right? ML squared. One third ML squared for one case. When we have a rod and we are rotating the rod, there's an axis that is at the edge of the rod. The second case is A and B. What is I for the second case? For example, when we have a rod and the axis of rotation is right in the middle. So this is the L, and it has a mass M. It has a mass M, this is the length L. Okay. So for that case, the I is equal to 112 M L squared. What about the cylinder? For the cylinder, I is equal to 1 half M R Squared. Now let's consider this case. So we have a cylinder. Cylinder or disk, right? Both of them are disk. Example cylinder. And here's an axis that is passing through the center of mass. And it has a radius r. And we know that i is equal to 1 half mr squared with respect to the axis that's passing through the center of mass. What if we have another axis 
For example, at the edge of the cylinder, for example here. Why is it more to inertia of that cylinder with respect to this axis? Do we know that? Not really, right? Not yet. But we can guess. Somebody make a guess. Yep. Yeah. Is it going to be higher? Slower? I mean the value. What do you think? <laughs> Gabriel? Higher. Higher. Yeah, what does it mean? Higher moment of inertia. Um, more coefficient t is going to be greater than one half. Yeah. The radius from it from the um, x rotation to the edge to its rotation. Okay. What what does it mean in terms of your, your feelings when you try to move it? Okay. Here's how I would say that. Yeah. He's nicer. Thanks, Matt. Give me the physics. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it would take more um, energy to reach the same rotational inertia and the rotational tangential rotational, rotational speed. Inertia. Okay, in terms of energy. Yeah. In terms of torque, it would be harder to angularly accelerate that object, right? That's the definition of moment of inertia. So now we don't know how to find it, and here comes the answer. It is called parallel axis theorem. Write it down. The parallel axis theorem. <laughs> Which states that I, moment of inertia, with respect to any axis, is equal to. Moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass plus m d squared. What is d? So let's write that. So i center of mass is a moment of inertia of the center of mass. That's known. For example, for the cylinder, it's equal to one half m r squared. For the sphere, two fifths m r squared. And the d is a distance. From the central axis, the axis that is going through the center of mass, to the rotational axis. Okay? And write down this equation in your formula sheet. You need that. You will need that. formulas that you can write down as a fundamental, but it's not actually a fundamental, right? You can prove this by uh, mm -hmm. uh, using trig, it sucks, it's like a page long, mm -hmm. not fun. Um, mm -hmm. Sending out a good amount around probably later. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can just write down, yep. you just write five parallel axis theorem. So for our case, what is the value of t for the disk? R. R, exactly. So this is a D. This is a distance from the axis of rotation to the central axis that is passing through the center of mass. So this D, in our case, is equal to the radius of the disk. So let's find it. For our problem, for the disk, for the disk, I, for this disk, I is equal to one half m r squared, that is the i center of mass, plus m d squared. In our case, d is equal to r, so m r squared. And so we get an answer that for the disk that is rotating with an axis that is passing through the edge of the disk, we have the i equal to what is that? Three two. One half. M R squared. So this is for our case. Is it bigger than one half? Yes. And it's going to be tough to angularly accelerate that object, right? Uh, I thought all C's had to be less than one. Yeah, all C's should be less than one. But the radius is two R. So if we were to substitute in two R, 
there, it would be lost in. Mm, exactly. Now, what is the, from, from this point, what is the farthest mass of that cylinder? It's at the edge. The distance from this point to the farthest point is 2r. And as Gabriel said, if we substitute instead of the ar radius, the 2r, we are going to have the value that's less than 1. Now, I would like to give you a problem. The following problem. Do it yourself. So we have a rod. And we are going to calculate its moment of inertia with respect to the axis that's passing through the edge of it. And we know that moment of inertia at this point is equal to 1 12 m r m l squared. And we are going to find i at this point. Do it using the parallel axis theorem. You already know the value. But let's prove it. Are we going to have the same answer as A and B? One minute, so let's do it fast. It's faster. Check it out. What is the D here? That center of mass, I center of mass is 112 ml squared, and we find we need to find the I uh, with respect to this axis. Is equal to? Sometimes I do that. Don't forget that d squared is L over R squared. So L, L over 2 squared. So we have both squared. So 112 ml squared plus 1 fourth ml squared. And simple mass here is 3. So we have 4 12 ml squared, which is 1 third ml squared, right? Do we have the same answer? So we learned by part this. So we have done that. We have done the proof. So the parallax is here is one. So now I'm going to show you the next problem. And you are going to do it by yourself. The problem is. Suppose we have uniform density rod of mass m and length l. It spins about some axis at distance h from one edge. 
So, this is the rod, and the axis is not in the middle, not at the edge, but somewhere in between. The distance h from the edge of the rod. So we need to find the i for that point. For that axis. What is the other side? What is the other side? Uh, what, yeah, the total distance is L. So what is this distance by the way? From here to here. All means that my extension. Okay. So that space all other four. Oh yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very messed up. Okay, cool. And now I have a question. Using the parallel axis, please find the value of that. <coughs> moment of inertia with respect to that axis. Do it. Have five minutes? Yeah, some half hour. Yeah. But actually, do the opposite. <coughs> do the opposite. Are you just looking at like, what? What's your question? And if you have questions, <laughs> please ask. Because you need that. Yeah, half Yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody is struggling doing anywhere, please ask. Any any questions? Is it hard? Okay. Yes. You can discuss it within your group mates. Discuss it with your group mates. Share ideas.
No, uh, the, uh, the red one is a half of the rod. This is a, the axis that's passing through the center of mass of the rod. Okay? So this distance is L half, this distance is H, it is L half minus H. So we are going to substitute I is equal to I is center of mass, but the rod is equal to 112 ml squared plus MD squared, and D is equal to L half minus H and squared. So we have 112 ML squared plus blah, blah, blah. And here L squared, da, 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 LH plus H squared. And in the end, we are going to have something. I'm going to line it down Did here. You so help me, Sunny. What do you have in here? M times, I factor out here, I got M times L squared. Um, like one third m l squared, right? Something like that? Minus. I factored out the energy. Ah, okay. okay. But if we open everything, sure, yeah. what are we going to have? Um, minus m l h plus m h squared. So, cool. Some strange answer. And how do we know if it is correct or not? Do we have any method to? Figure it out, Gabriel. Can you check the extremes? Check the extremes, the critical cases. Let's do it. But the, let's vary the age. So what if the age is equal to zero? So we are moving the axis closer to the edge. So h is equal to zero. Case, h is equal to zero. What do we have? I is equal to what? One third ml squared. Is it correct? Yeah, we know that. What case? Case of H is equal to L over 2. So axis, we move it in here. We move it here. So what do we have? I is equal to 1 third ML squared. This we are going to substitute. Minus M, L, L over 2, plus M, L squared over 2. Is it 2? Squared. 4. 4. So equal to. Da -da 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 -da. So, what is the common denominator? 12. 12, right? 6, 4, 3, 4 minus 6 plus 3 is 1. And 12, M, L squared. Is it right? We check the critical cases and we see that everything is working. Everything works. Perfect. Is it cool? Extreme cases? Great. That's a tool for you. For your exams, whatever you do. Cool, let's do the case now. Up to this point, we solved the problem by where we know the rotational inertia of the center of mass. What if we don't know that? Some of you just forget it. Forgot, you yeah, forgot it. Or you just don't know the object itself. For example, we have some peculiar object. I'm going to erase that. Some strange object like this. 
This is the axis of rotation. What is the moment of inertia of that object? They have no idea, right? But then here comes the integration. Oh no, they heard, oh no, no, oh yes. Yes, this is a calculus physics, right? Calculus, you're going to learn the calculus. So, let's consider. This object has small, tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. The tiny pieces, for example, each has a mass, for example, this one is M1, small mass, M1, and it is at the radius R1. This one, M2, at the radius R2. This one is mass M3 at the radius R3, and so on. And there are a bunch of them, the masses, M1 to N infinity. But we, if we sum it up, we are going to have the total moment of inertia. This is a summation of Mi Ri squared. I is the indices. So it is like M1 R1 squared plus M2 R2 squared plus M3 R3 squared and so on. Right? We can, we have no time to calculate all of that small amount. In that case, we need to figure it out the function that we describe the distribution. Okay? A function that describes the distribution. Let's find it out for our key. How would we solve this problem? So, first of all, let's define the axis of rotation. Axis of rotation is defined. And then, let's divide it into small pieces, the dm's. For example, I have small p with mass dm with width dx at a distance at this point, it is the distance x is equal to minus h, right? And we divide it into small pieces, and we are going to sum up the rotational inertia of each of that piece, and we are going to have total rotational inertia of that object. Okay? So our problem i, the summation, is becoming the following. i is equal to r squared dm integration. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's find out. For our case, the r is a radius, and in our case, we have only one axis, and it's going to simplify our problem. So r in our case is equal to x. What is the dm? How it is related? Let's talk about it. So look, small piece dm has a Length dx, whole road has a mass m, and it has a length l. Again, small p has a mass dm, and a distance uh, at the length dx. Whole road has a mass m, at the distance l. And we know that our road is uniform density. <laughs> what does it mean? That this relation is proportionality. Right? Small mass dm at the, uh, with a width with a length dx, whole road with a mass m and the length of power. And this proportion is called density. In our case, it is linear density. And I would like to write down linear now. So we have different types of densities. So linear density. And I would like to ask you to write down in your formula sheet, okay? Linear density is found as m over l, l, I'm sorry, dm over dx, and it has a symbol lambda, okay? This is linear density. Let's go to the next one, area density. And it has a symbol sigma. Yes, O? Small. Yep. And it is equal to dm over d 
A. And volume density. And you know that already, right? What is that? It's simple. It's volume density. Tim? Rho. Rho. Where do you remember that from, Tim? Excellent job. Excellent job. Where do you remember that from? Uh, from the derivation of inside rate. Mm -hmm. So now, other way to remember is this is like linear density is a mass per unit of length. Sigma is a mass per unit of area. Rho is mass per unit of volume. Okay? So, cool. In real life, everything would be a volumetric density, but I think it's clear to each one of you that we have plenty of shapes that are like just flat planes and other shapes that are just single line objects. So you'll see these terms a lot in physics over the next few years. So, yeah, let's go back. Look, dm over dx is equal to m over l. l. From here we can derive the dm mass. Let's derive it. So, from here we are going to derive dm over dx is equal to m over l. We multiply both sides by dx. So we have dm equal m over l dx. Right? And if we substitute it in here, we are going to have. So r is equal to x. So x squared dm is m over l dx. So, are we ready to integrate? It seems like that, right? What do we know? What do we need to know now? Boundaries, right? What is the boundary? So, this is the x that is equal to zero. So, x is changing from what to what? From negative h to x is equal to l minus h. So let's substitute from minus h to l minus h. And we know that m over l, look, that's, I need to say more about this formula now. Look, everything is, like, there is only one variable, variable x, and now we can integrate it. Okay? Let's do it. So m over l is constant, so we can take it out of uh, integral sign. So m over l, and we have x squared dx from minus h to l minus h. And now it's time for you to work, because I'm exhausted. <laughs> and drive it, please. Go ahead. Yes. No, 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 just yes. Yeah, I know, it's gross, right? <laughs> God, I was like, this exact proof shows up on the test! <laughs> Do it! Do it! What? Is it? Could you find the, could you find for any not using this? He was just showing you generally. Yeah, it's it's like it's general. General. Yeah. So we're gonna do it the bottom block. Not now. Oh, that That's not a uniform shape, it's gross. You can do it in multi-variable. I left the binary away. You probably need a Calculator. 
where you can plug stuff in and say, calculate. Put it in each one. Wait, it doesn't give you the function. Yeah, it does. It does. It's called expand. It's an awesome function on your calculator. Oh. Expand. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think we can these proofs. It's for a reason. There's all sorts of skills that you learn. Nobody likes them, but they're part of it. <laughs>
So what are the steps? Let's draw or let's write down the steps. So what did we do the first thing? Very first thing. What is the very first thing we need to do? Step number one. Yep. What was that? Gabriel? The for which method using the integral method? Integral method? Oh yeah, integral method. Uh, well, we have to split it up into dx's and establish a general formula for how far they're going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. In other words, like, okay, Gabriel said, uh, like, what did we do the first thing? Any other? Sunny? Yeah, find the linear density. Yep. Define the central axis. Find the central axis. Okay, so what did we do? Let's 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 write down everything here. So as Gabriel said, um, what did you say? Define your dx's and um, what was it? Define the formula. Define how far those are from the center of. Uh huh. How, how far each dx is from the uh, dx from from the axis and Sunny said so find linear density what else what else we did what else Gabriel, a rotation. We found the uh, master. Pardon? We uh, put DM on the side. DM, yep. Find the DM, right? So we can connect this two and get uh, DM over TX that was equal to M over L, and we could find the DM. Okay? What else did we do? What is important also? When we integrate, are we going to integrate the whole object and like everything beyond it? Limits, the boundaries of that integration, right? Define, we define the boundaries. In our case, it was from minus h to l minus h. What else did we do? Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Then we substituted. Substituted and x for r. X for r. Yeah. So depending on our like problem, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, we define the r. Yeah. In our case, it was x. Okay, and then substitute everything and solve the integration, right? Yeah. And here we go, uh, the steps that, I guess all of that that we have said is in this step. First, figure out, figure out how to express mass as a function of length, so dm can be expressed in terms of dx. That's what Gabriel said, Sunny said, and Roshan combined. Great. The second, for example, in our case, it, it was a length, but we can solve problems with the area density, we can solve problems with volume density, but the steps are the same. The second, substitute an expression into i equals r squared dm, and the step number three, determine the limits, the boundaries, and take the integral. Please write down these three steps. While you're writing, those three steps are here on this worksheet so that you can redo this problem and do it again for practice.
because a fair amount of you, I think, right now are thinking, dear God, I expected to do this on my own without any help. Yep, you are. We give you extra practice space there. With the step laid out. Yes. So, for example, if you change the age. Okay. It depends on the way. Could you please define it? Explain the uh, question again. Once again. No. Could you just write it down for me? Okay. Thank you. So. How, many, how much time do we have? One minute. So much time. <laughs> so see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow.